and thank you for joining us for another Mark's Madness alongside Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. The boys basketball brackets are out as of Sunday, mm -hmm. which means we've got a lot to get to and a lot to break down. So let's jump right into it, Mark. Start with Division One and the yep. undefeated Lima Senior Spartans. They are the one seed in the UT Toledo District. As we take a look at that bracket, they will get the winner of Fremont Ross and Toledo Start. And the bottom of the bracket features the three seed Whitmer against Ashland. Now, Mark, Fremont Ross, that's a that's yeah. an interesting possible first round matchup for Lima right. Senior given what Xavier Simpson did last Tuesday. Spartans was beaten by 100 or 100, over 100 points and beaten by 50 two times in a row. So if you're Fremont Ross and you're playing Toledo to start, what's your motivation? Do you want to come out and win? Obviously you do. Everybody wants to win. Let's see what happens with the Spartans. So they will play well against the Spartans or at least try to if they can get by start. The interesting thing I thought about that whole bracket was number three seed Whitmer went up with Lima Senior. Okay, but all the other seeds, two, three, two, four, five, six, seven, all went to the other bracket trying to stay away from the Spartans. Xavier Simpson set a school record against Fremont Ross with 65 points last Tuesday night. Mentioned that earlier in this season, 59 against Fremont Ross, setting the right. record then at that time. He's done a, everything this year for the Spartans. Is he going to be Mr. Basketball? Well, he certainly, I think, is the favorite. And, of course, we have a little bit of a bias in our area because we see so much of him and know how well he's played, not only this year, but in his two previous seasons. He's got a lot of things going for him. He's obviously got the scoring average of 30-plus. His statistics are outstanding. He's going to the University of Michigan. That helps when you put that on your resume. I've got a D1 scholarship to a, a Big Ten school. You know, that helps. His team is undefeated. That makes a difference. He's got a lot of things going for him right now. If there's a negative, and, and I wouldn't view it this way, but I know some voters will go, well, when did he get his 59? When did he get his 65 against teams that they beat by more than 50 points? Are they padding his stats along the way and trying to showcase him in a way that's a little bit outstanding? I wouldn't view it that way. There might be a few voters who do. Still got to score all those points, yeah. no matter who, you know, there's still players out there on the yeah. opposing side. So congrats to X and Lima Senior is now 18-0. They beat Finley and Salina also this week, and they're in more than in the driver's seat for the right. track. A win at Whitmer on Friday gets them at least a share because they only have two games left after that. You see anybody that could possibly trip them up in this district? Well, there's always things to look at. Certainly, they beat Whitmer by 18 one time. They do play them again this Friday night. Into the other bracket, you've got Finley, who's played the Spartans tough for a while with their slowdown game the other night. And Toledo St. John's is in the other bracket as well in that particular district. They were the two seed. And Toledo St. John's has played the Spartans to a one-point game once, to an eight-point game a second time. And we know how difficult it is to beat a team three times in one season. Still, the Spartans will be the favorites going into that district. Finley, the five seed in the lower half of the district. They'll play Sylvania and Northview. Interesting game on Friday between Finley and Lima Senior in that the Trojans just tried to slow down the Spartans. They did. It's not easy to do. It right. almost worked, but they were still trailing and stalling, and I think that's where Finley got into trouble. They were down eight and still holding on to the basketball and did so for multiple minutes in the game, and then Quincy Simpson turned it around. When he got the ball back, he held it on Finley and made him come out and play him. It was an interesting chess match. I think fans would prefer to see a game that would go up and down the floor. Coach Rookie doing whatever he can to give his team a chance. The Spartans counteracted. All right, that's Division One. Let's move on to Division Two now in the ONU District, which we might as well call the WBL District <laughs> because all 10 teams yeah. now, with OG moving up from Division Three to Division Two, all 10 WBL teams in this same district. And let's take a look. We've got Salina and Wapak meeting in a sectional semifinal. The winner will get Upper Sandusky. Ottawa Glendorf is the three seed. Brian plays Van Wert. So we're just looking at this top half here. What do you think, Ottawa Glendorf? Possibly the favorite as the three seed? Well, I think so, only in this respect. We know how good their schedule is and how they are so tournament tested, Ottawa Glandorf is. Upper Sandusky was seeded second. You go, how did they get to be second when they were undefeated coming into this? Well, the WBL schools who know defiance better, have a better concept of defiance, and know that you know, what they did a year ago in the state tournament, they kind of hung together and voted defiance into the number one seed position. Upper Sandusky cut does come in undefeated. Their schedule is a little bit suspect when you compare it to who defiance played. That's where that goes, and that's why OG, I think, has a chance. Their tournament experience that they've had before, they've played in Lima Senior Gym before, where that game will be held. And you just see that perhaps there's a chance there for, for OG to win and the three seed defeat number one. All right, and then we've got the bottom half of the bracket now with Defiance. There is the one seed. These games will be played at Paulding. St. Mary's Kenton in a sectional semifinal, 11 versus 12, and Elida Bath in a sectional semifinal. Shawnee awaits the winner of that Elida Bath game. Well, Matt, first of all, and this is kind of an editorial comment and a little bit off the idea of playing the games. I appreciate we've gone to this huge district where we bring 10, 11, 12, 13 teams in, depending on where you're at. But let's look at where they're sending the teams to play. And I know the coaches chose to go there, 
but you take Bath Elida, would be a great game at Lima Senior, it's going to Paulding. The winner of that game is going to play Shawnee, that's going to Paulding. At the same time, you know, you've got Van Wert playing Brian, that would be a great matchup at Paulding, that's coming to Lima Senior. So it, it seems a little bit odd how we've got things spread out, it's how the coaches chose to do it, but I think we need to think about getting things a little bit more centralized when it comes to how we match up and who's going to play who where. Obviously some rematches with all these WBL teams and Elida Bath, the sectional semifinal member Bath won the tip-off right. consolation game. Could see a number of other rematches. Remember that great Defiance OG game earlier in the year with Defiance winning? That's a possible sectional uh, district final. Well, here's one of the odd things about that as well. Bath is going to play Elida at Elida on Friday and come right back again and play them again on Tuesday in the tournament. That's just one of the oddities that happens. It's a few other scenarios where that's going to happen throughout our tournament bracket sheet as well. So we've got that scenario. Bath has lost twice to Shawnee. Shawnee is, is playing okay right now. Elida's played well lately. We'll see where that goes. As for the league, Defiance is still 7-0 after beating St. Mary's. OG 6-1, they beat Wapak this week. So still the one game separating. Two games left on the schedule, the WBL schedule. Defiance has Van Wert and Shawnee. OG plays Elida and St. Mary's. Elida is also 5-2, so they can't be counted out just yet. But Defiance looks to be the favorite here. They really do. We're waiting to see if they get Cam Singleton back. If so, what effectiveness level he'll play with with the shoulder injury. Certainly Coach Lehman would like to have them back and get him a game or two before they get to the tournament. And that will be how they will need to play and improve as the season goes through the tournament. All right, on to Division Three now, and yep. this is where we find a lot of local teams. Of course, <laughs> Division Three and Division right. Four always packed with locals, and the Lima Senior District is going to be very interesting. These are some of the best sectional games I can remember, and that's yep. because everyone wanted to avoid Lima <laughs> Senior, or excuse me, Lima Central Catholic, right. who's the one seed. So up top, Jefferson is the four. They have a bye to the sectional final, and they'll get the winner of Wayne Trace Allen East, then Spencerville Marion Local, the two-seven matchup. They just played each other right. on Saturday with Spencerville winning. On the bottom half, Lima Central Catholic. Look, the one seed, they'll get Riverdale or Parkway. Coldwater, the three seed, getting Carey or Bluffton, the winner of that one. And this is just top to bottom. We talked about it with Coach Jim Linder in our, our warm-up show earlier in the year, just knowing the talent in this district and having watched the season play out. Boy, has it lived up to this is a talented district. It really is a talented district. And when you think Ottawa Glendor would have, could have, should have been in here had the bracketing not been redone size wise and school wise, they've moved up to Division II. Throw them in there and think of how good this would have been. But you're right. Um, Jefferson, first of all, they're waiting for the winner of Allen East and, uh, and Wayne Trace. That should be a good matchup to begin with. I just had a chance to see Wayne Trace the other night. They are really good. Had a great game with Crestview the other night. Went double overtime. They're getting healthy. They've had some injury problems through the year. That's why they're 12 and 7. But they're really going to get better right now. And I really look forward to the fact that if they defeat Allen East, you look at Jefferson and Wayne Trace, that will be a really good matchup here. Looking forward to that as well. Yeah. Now for LCC, they knocked off Lincoln View in a battle of number ones on Friday night. An exciting game. LCC's schedule battle tested, and it's going to continue to be that way in this district. But when it's all said and done, I find it hard to see any of these teams getting past the T-Birds. Matt, I would agree with that. I think they are the prohibitive favorite in that particular district and probably into the regionals, uh, semifinals and finals as well. They certainly have the talent, they have the experience, they've got a coaching staff, they've got a fan base. They will be heavily favored. Now, upsets occur, that's why we play the basketball games, but they will be heavily favored through the districts. Elsewhere in Division Three, Mark, we look at Versailles in the Southwest District, yes. one of the Dayton districts. They will take on Arcanum right. in the Dayton District, and then also we've got Anna and Springfield meeting up in another Dayton District. That would be the Dayton 2 District. So, Anna and Versailles, they start their postseason a little bit earlier with the games on February the 20th. What do you look for out of these two teams? Well, first of all, they do play a week earlier. That started years ago when everybody wanted to play at the University of Dayton Arena, and so they had so many games at UD that they had to start their tournament a week early. They still do that down there. Versailles and Anna will both be favored early in the tournament. They're both good. We're going to get to Versailles a little bit later on and where they fit in in the MAC play right now because they have just the one game remaining in conference play because they do start everything a week early. And Anna, I get a chance to see them on Friday night when they match up with Jackson Center. Look and see how that game goes and how Anna plays heading into the tournament. All right, rounding out our final bracket here in Division Three, the Napoleon District. And Liberty Benton is the one seed, and they'll get the winner of Delta Patrick Henry. Meanwhile, Paulding and Tenora will meet in a sectional final on February the 26th. All of those games at Defiance. Bottom half, two seed Van Buren. They'll get Fairview or Montpelier. The winner of Archibald Liberty Center gets Elmwood at Wasion. 
Interesting district here with Liberty Benton, the one seed, Van Buren, the two seed. A couple BVC teams could meet in a district final. A uh, couple things to think about through there. First of all, Paulding was one of those teams that kind of struggled for a while. They lost four in a row. They've split their last eight. They have enough tools that they could give problems to Liberty Benton should they get to that particular game. And Van Wert is a little bit different situation. Now, they were on that roll. They were 12-1 and one at one point. They've lost three in a row since they've had some injury situations, lost their point guard. They'd like to get him back. It was kind of an interesting two-seed given the injury situation that's going on at Van Buren. And we'll just see if they get guys healthy and can get back and play well. Well, remember how they started the season and then they just had that one loss to right. Liberty Benton. Since then, they've stumbled a little bit, probably due to injury, like you said. Right. But that leads us to our BVC standings, where Lipsick and Liberty Benton are 8-1. Right. Arlington and Van Buren are 7-2. and two. Here's who the Eagles have left, Hopewell Loudon and Pandora Gilboa, while Lipsick plays Van Buren and hope well louded. I would be surprised if Liberty Benton loses another game. So the question is, can Lipsick hold serve? And of course, the Van Buren game is the big one in that, although Hope Well Loudon can compete with them as well. But that's the big game. And we'll go back to what we just said a moment ago. If Van Buren's not at their top of game, if they're not healthy, then certainly that favors Lipsick. Both teams can score points. That will be kind of an up and down game. Uh, I really like how Lipsick has played lately. They've been on a real winning streak, like I think one eight in a row or eight out of nine, something like that. They've been playing very well lately. I really like what Lipsick's doing, but we'll see if Van Buren gets healthy. Vikings are doing that thing where you start playing your best basketball towards the end of the season. They could become and a team to watch during the postseason. You know, we, we're having going to get to the Putnam County League, but they have a tough loss to Columbus Grove in the midst of all that winning streak, or they'd be playing for the PCL championship as well. Yeah, the Putnam County League, also interesting finish. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's move on to Division 4 now in the Elida District, mm -hmm. and that's where we find the top seed, <laughs> Lincoln View. Yep. And just mentioned, you know, they lost to LCC, of course, on – Friday night in a great game, as you saw on WOSM, but no harm in losing to the to the number one team in, in Division Three, a division right. ahead of you. So Pandora Gilbo and Corey Rawson will meet with the winner getting Lincoln View. That's, uh, that'll be a tough matchup. Right. Miller City gets Collider or St. John's. At the bottom, Crestview is the two seed. Fort Jennings and Ottoville. Crestview will get the winner of that one. Lipsick, Continental, Grove, Antwerp. Those are the 3-9 and 6-8 matchups with the winners meeting at OG. The top half of, of that bracket, those games are at Van Wert. Well, Lincoln View has already beaten Miller City Clyde and Delphi St. John. So now you're into this situation. Can they repeat what they did in, during the regular season? They will be favored to do that. I kind of like that Clyde and Delphi St. John's game early on. The records are somewhat similar. Clyde has a little bit better record. Delphi St. John's has played perhaps a little bit tougher schedule. That will be an early game, uh, early season matchup in the tournament to be worth looking at. Could have a Lincoln View Crestview rematch. Right. Remember, the Lancers beat the Knights by 12, and that would come in a district final. Big, big weekend, though, for the Knights this past weekend because they had a big right. league victory on Friday night and then knocked off Wayne Trace in overtime on Saturday. I had a chance to see Crestview twice this weekend, and they are really getting better. A nice win at Spencerville in a league contest. And then on Saturday night, just a tremendous basketball game, double overtime game with Wayne Trace, a good rivalry game, big gym, full house. It was really a special evening, I think. And what's really happened is Cody Mefford, who's had concussion syndrome throughout much of the years, only played in seven or eight games, played in that game against Wayne Trace, played extremely well, and he makes a difference for Coach Best's team. Well, why don't you show us how in, in our weekly well, play breakdown? First of all, in our play breakdown this weekend, the, the game this weekend was just so competitive. And right here, watch the play that Ethan Linder makes. The strip, the steal, the find a teammate who goes in for a layup. And you can see we're in overtime. What a big basket that was. You can see the crowd and their response to as well. Here's the play that, we're gonna, that kind of sets things up. It gets the pass to the corner to Etzler. Jumper for three out of the corner. And that was a big basket, as you can see. They were down four at that time. And watch it again. Meffert is playing some point guard. Screen, second screen, and here's the jump shot out of the corner by the freshman. And what a player he is going to be in the future. That put him down just one. And then we're going to see here in just a moment, they're going to get a baseline drive to the goal. There you see the, the freshman. They're down two at the end. Here comes Mefford baseline up and scores. This young man had four points with four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. He ended up with 21 points. So in the last, uh, what, 12 and a half minutes of the basketball game, he had 17 points. He's a 90% free throw shooter. That basket right there put it to the second overtime. In the second overtime, we're going to get this move right here. He splits the trap, goes inside, goes up and scores. That puts his team up three. They're going to make free throws down the end and eventually win by five, a tremendous high school basketball game. Maybe a potential throwback 44 or 10 uh, years from now, right? I, I think right now we just archive that one, put a big sticker on it and say, hey, look, in 10 years, drag that one out and show it again. I watched it last night. I don't typically watch our games over again. It was such a good basketball game. I watched it last night on Monday night at 8 o'clock, 
It was a great high school basketball game. It was just fun to watch. Yeah, that's why those two teams know each other very well, they being do. so close to each other. Get that Ray Etzler gymnasium packed like it was. That's, that's a lot of fun. Yep. So let's talk about the NWC standings okay. now with Lincoln View and Crestview in this bracket. Lincoln View still 6-0. Spencerville's now 5-2 after that loss to Crestview on Friday night. Jefferson and Crestview are 4-2. So Lincoln View has at least a share, and they can win it outright if they defeat Ada on Friday night. And they'll be favored in there. Ava, of course, had a nice double over or overtime win the other night against McComb. That was a good win for them. But I think uh, just talent-wise and with what Lincoln View is playing for right now, they will certainly be favored. And this is also a good time for the PCL standings with a number of PCL right. teams in here as well. Grove and Collida are both 5-1 and one atop the league. Miller City is 4-2. and two. If Collida beats Continental on Friday night, they get at least a share. Grove plays Miller City on Saturday. Well, don't count Continental out. They've upset people before throughout the season. They have some, some tools up there with Williamson scoring a basketball for them. But certainly you would think Collida, with everything that's riding on it and their chance to win at least to share the championship, will go out and win that basketball game, but don't count the Pirates out. And then, like you said, Lipsick could have been right there as that's well. Right maybe playing in two leagues, factoring in there because they're competing for the towards the top of the BBC. It's been a very competitive PCL year this year, and there's no reason to think that those teams won't do well going into the tournament. All right, our next bracket comes to us from Wapakoneta, and that's where we yep. find the top-seeded Perry Commodores, who will get either Temple Christian, Temple Christian or Ridgemont. That game's at Allen East. Fort Recovery is the three-seed. USV and waynesfield Goshen will square off in a sectional semifinal, and then play Fort Recovery. The bottom half, St. Henry, the two seed, New Knoxville and Harden Northern. The winner of that one plays the Redskins. And the four seed, Minster, will get either Ada or New Bremen. Tons of local teams in this one. The bottom half at Coldwater, those sectional games. And then we'll move on to the districts at Wapak. What do you see in this bracket? Well, first of all, Perry's setting in a good spot. There are four NWC schools in that particular bracket, and they have defeated uh, you know, those throughout the regular season. A little concern with Temple Christian. Brock Bohm has not scored the black basketball lately. He's averaging just five points a game over the last five games. He made 54 three-point field goals in the first 15 games. He's got just four in the last five games. So Temple really needs to get Brock Bowman going again if they want to compete in the tournament. But Perry is setting in a good spot, but waiting out there for them is Fort Recovery. The Indians are 13-5. and five. They've battled test with who they played in their, in their own conference. That will be a really good game. I think that could be a really good district semifinal. And you said four NWCC teams in this bracket. It's all NWCC and MAC, with the yeah. exception of Ada, who gets right. you know stuck with all these teams. But it, these, So that means that we're going to have rematches again, which you right. like to see, but it also becomes difficult to beat teams again, which we've seen throughout the years in the postseason. You know, one regular season matchup goes a certain way. The postseason doesn't follow suit. Well, first, sometimes games happen early in the season and teams improve or in some cases go, go south when they get to the second half of the season, don't play as well. So that's always a factor to consider. The other thing is the team that wins, they tend to go, OK, we did this before. It was successful. Let's do it again. The team that lost says, it's OK, what are we going to do to improve, change, do differently? So they come up with a different game plan. And the team that won before has to adjust to it. Kind of an interesting scenario. That's why the tournament's always fun. Our max standings, Mark, have Versailles yep. at the top. Now, Minster beat Coldwater 53-50 on Friday night. So now it's Minster, Coldwater, Fort Recovery, and St. Henry, all 5-2, and two, trailing Versailles, who's 7-1. and one. Versailles, of course, will be the favorite heading into the weekend, but they're playing Minster. That's a big basketball game, particularly the way the Wildcats are playing well lately. They've won nine out of their last 11. They have a loss to Jackson Center in there. That's no disgrace. They also have a two-point loss to Debreman. Unfortunately, that's the night I saw them. They didn't play particularly well that evening, although don't take anything away from how well New Bremen played. It was a hard-fought uh, battle that night, but they're nine out of the last 11. The Minister's got it, got it going right now. That'll be a really good game with Versailles. You know, the MAC basketball season obviously started slow because of a lot of the football success, but boy, has it come on. Each week, there's a, there's a game to watch in, in right. that conference. All right, let's move on now to the Liberty Benton District, staying in Division Four. It's Macomb, the two seed yep. at the top. They'll play St. Wendelin or St. Joe's Central Catholic. Then North Baltimore is the four seed, Calvert and Arcadia. We'll square off to see who plays North Baltimore. New Regal's the one seed. Van Lu, Old Fort in a sectional semi with the winner getting the one seed. Arlington plays Lakota. And then Mohawk, Hopewell, Loudon at the bottom. Well, first of all, don't count out North Baltimore. They're kind of on the fringe of our area. We don't give them a lot of coverage. They beat Macomb in the regular season back at the end of December by two. They have a guy named Chad Wright who can flat out score. And when you have a guy like that, just a go-to guy and can carry you through the tournament, they can be a dangerous opponent heading into the tournament. He had 27 against Macomb the first time, so don't count out North Baltimore just by looking at, at the stats and how they, uh, the ranking when they brought, put the tournament brackets together. 
All right, just two more brackets left yep. to look at. We've got Rushi in the <laughs> Division Four Dayton Two yep. district. There's three Dayton districts in Division right. Four, and Rushi plays Bradford. And then there's Layman Catholic waiting for the winner of that one. So should be interesting to see how that one plays out. Rushi coming off the victory on Friday night over Jackson Center in Shelby County League play. Rushi and Jackson Center tied in Shelby County action heading into the weekend. Uh, Rushi is going to play Botkins. If they win, they'll have at least a share of the championship. Uh, Rushi has to, or excuse me, Jackson Center then has to play Anna. That's our, one of our TV games this particular weekend. And if Jackson Center, they can beat Anna, then they end up with a tie with Rushi. That's a really big game, Anna and Jackson Center. Rushi, you know, kind of feels like each year they get their districts, regionals. You know, you, know, you can't really ever count them out. They were senior late in last year. But they're playing good basketball again. That was a big league victory on Friday night. They really are. Um, you know, when we looked at Rushi early in the season, we thought, well, okay, they've graduated 10 seniors. They brought a new coach in. It'll take them a while to get going. But they really haven't missed a beat. They played very well. Here they are playing for the SCAL championship. All right, our last bracket, Dayton 3 district. Jackson Center will play and Sonia. There they are. And that game is at Piqua. Fairlawn has a bye to the sectional finals. Triad Riverside winner will play Fairlawn. So Jackson Center, another team to look out for, I think, come tournament time again with, uh, with this district in Dayton 3. Well, if you have a point guard, and they do in Drew Sosby, if you have a post player, which they do in Wildermuth, you got two great pieces to build around. You fill in with a solid a group of players around them. You have a good coaching staff and a good script uh, for fans to follow as well. Uh, Jackson Center, I think, is going to go deep in the tournament this year. All right, so those are the brackets. Great job, Mark, breaking it all down. I think we had 13 brackets to take a look at, and we'll fill them in, of course, as we go. Looking forward to the game starting in a couple of weeks with those sectional semis in the Southwest District actually starting sooner than that. Mm -hmm. So now, Mark, which games are we looking forward to this weekend? We touched on a couple, but yeah. we've got league titles to decide, and then these games are going to be crucial heading into tournament time. Well, I'm a selfish guy, and since I get to see Anna Jackson Center, I'm really looking forward to that. I've not seen the Rockets live yet this year. I have seen Jackson Center. I think that'll be a great matchup in the SCAL, and will Jackson Center be able to compete and win a league championship? And the other one I'm looking at is Minster and Versailles for the MAC championship. Can Versailles win it outright, or does Minster hang in? I think that'll be another huge basketball game one to be looking forward to. Well, I'm a senior Whitmer, a big one for the Spartans mm -hmm. on Friday with a chance to clinch at least a share of the track. That would be a historic moment for Lima Senior. Also, looking St. Henry for recovery. That should yep. be an interesting one. Lincoln View Ada we talked about with the Lancers trying to get in there. Spencerville Jefferson, that should be a good one as well. So there's plenty of good games. Our rebroadcast schedule covers many of them. We've got 14 games for you this week. Let's take a look at it right now. It begins Wednesday at 7.30 with Heidelberg versus the Ohio Northern Men live on WOSN, courtesy of our friends at NK Telco. Wednesday, 9.30, Miller City versus Perry. Then Thursday, a doubleheader, college doubleheader for you. The Defiance College taking on Bluffton University. We'll do the women and the men starting at 6 with the ladies, 8 p.m. for the men. Friday at 10.30, Arlington versus Macomb. Good one in the Blanchard Valley Conference. Friday at 10.44 on WTLW. That's the 8 Lincoln View game. Saturday at 3, Muskingum against the ONU Women Live. The Ohio Northern Women having a fantastic season. They're nationally ranked. Saturday at 7, St. Henry and Fort Recovery. 8.30, Anniverse Jackson Center. That's where you'll be marked. Saturday, 10.30 on WTLW, Delphus Jefferson versus Elida. Very interesting non-conference game there. Could be a good tournament warm-up for both teams. Saturday at 10.30 p.m., Grandview Heights versus Wayne Trace. That's the Steve Hall Memorial game. Looking forward to bringing you that one as well. Sunday, three more games for you. 5.30, Ottawa versus Liberty Benton Girls. Obviously, we didn't have any time to talk girls right. this week, but there's a lot of interesting oh things my. going on there. Maybe we'll try to squeeze, squeeze yep. some of that in because their tournament also begins this weekend. So looking forward to that. Sunday, 7 p.m., Rushi versus Marion Local. And at 8.30, Collida and Van Buren squaring off. So that's the rebroadcast schedule. Of course, you can always visit the website WOSN.TV for the full schedule, including the replay times. Well, thanks so much for yep. your help. As always, Mark, great job and enjoy your games this weekend. We'll be back here next week on Mark's Madness.